So calorimetry doesn't just happen in your chem lab. It doesn't just happen in Chem 30 and then go away magically. It happens every day, all the time. Anytime you're using a chemical reaction to change the temperature of something else, that is a simple calorimeter. It's not necessarily a closed system, but it's still a calorimeter. So for that reason, we can still use our simple everyday reactions to figure out the enthalpy of our chemical reaction. We just have to slightly alter the chemical formula for the calorimetry calculations. So instead of just being NHM, so the moles multiplied by the molar enthalpy equals mc delta t of the water, we have to take into account the differences in the heat capacities of all the materials being heated up. So say for example you're making mac and cheese for supper because you're really hungry. You're going to heat up a pot of water in order to boil that macaroni so that you can make mac and cheese. So what you need to do is you need to turn on the burner. That is a chemical reaction. We have a combustion reaction to cause heat. Now we're heating up both the pot and the water that is present in that pot that we're going to boil our mac and cheese in. So you have to take into account the energy required to heat up the pot. Maybe it's a copper pot, maybe it's a metal pot, something like that. And the enthalpy or the heat required to heat up the water that's in the pot. So you have to take into account both of those. Now the pot is going to have a lower heat capacity, so it's going to be a lot faster to heat up. And then the water is going to take a little bit longer just because it has such a high heat capacity at that 4.19. The enthalpy of the combustion reaction of 13 grams of butane, if we were to burn 13 grams of butane on a campfire stove that is used to heat up a copper pot that weighs 500 grams with 1.5 liters of water from 17 degrees Celsius to 98 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what you're going to do first of all, the same thing as you did in your calorimeter, calorimeter questions, you're going to take your NHM on one side, which is your chemical reaction. In this case, we're burning butane. And we know that we're burning 13 grams. And we want to calculate the molar enthalpy of that. But we needed to heat up both the pot and the water, so we need to take into account both. What you need to be careful of is you need to be careful that your masses are both in the same unit. So you can't use the liters, which convert to kilograms, and then the grams. You have to use either grams or kilograms, not both. So I'm going to use grams because I think it's a lot easier. So we're going to say the mass of the pot is 500 grams. Now the heat capacity of a copper pot is going to be 0 0.385, so that is the heat capacity of copper, so that's joules per gram degree Celsius. And your temperature change is going to be from 98 to 17, okay? You also have to take into account the mass of the water, and 1.5 liters is equal to 1.5 kilograms, which is equal to 1,500 grams. Now your heat capacity of water is still 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. And your temperature change is going to be the same. It may take longer, but we want to have the temperature change of the same degree Celsius. Then all you're going to do is you're going to plug it into our new formula, which is NHM equals negative MC delta T of the pot plus MC delta T of the water. So you're going to take that 13 grams and you're going to convert it into moles using the molar mass of butane which is 58.14. And we're going to leave that HM, because that's what we're solving for. And we're going to use the negative outside the brackets, and we're going to take the heat capacity of the copper pot, multiply by the mass of the copper pot, multiplied by that change in temperature, which is 81 degrees Celsius. And we're going to add to it the 1,500 grams of water, multiplied by the 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius for the water, multiplied again by the 81 degrees Celsius. So overall, our units are still going to cancel out. Our grams are canceling out, so we have moles on this side. Over here, our grams cancel out, and our degrees Celsius cancels out on both of the equations. So we're left with joules per mole. Okay, we're going to add up this right side, which is how much change in temperature we have, and we're going to divide it by our moles to find the molar enthalpy. So when we calculate it all out, 
we end up with negative 2, 3, 4, 6, 5, 1, 9, point 219 joules per mole. So it seems like it takes a lot more energy to heat up both the pot and the water. So this is a lot more realistic. The reason for that is because it's an open system. So you are going to lose a lot of heat to the surroundings. So it is taking a lot of energy to heat up that pot and that water and lots of energy is just going to go out into the air because it's an open system. Of how effective our pot is at heating up the water. So how we do that is we use the formula that you learned in grade 10 from science 10 of efficiency is equal to output over input multiplied by 100. Now what we're getting out of the chemical reaction is heat. So we're always going to use our output as Q. And that's usually found as MC delta T. Now if you're heating up the pot and the water, you're going to use MC delta T plus MC delta T on the top. Our input is still that chemical reaction, which is our delta H equals NHM. Okay. The key here is you have to compare apples to apples or oranges to oranges. In other words, you have to compare kilojoules on top and kilojoules on the bottom or kilojoules per mole on top and kilojoules per mole on the bottom. You can't confuse the two, so you have to make sure your units are effectively the same. An aluminum pot with a mass of 300 grams was used to heat up 150 milliliters of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius to measure the efficiency of a simple combustion calorimeter heated by a stearic acid candle, and the enthalpy of that is given. What is the efficiency of the calorimeter if 50 grams of the stearic acid candle is burned to heat the water and the pot? So first things first, we need to figure out the input and the output. To calculate the input energy, we have to figure out the combustion reaction of stearic acid first things first. How we do that is we balance the equation of stearic acid. That is given there. Now what you have to do is you have to calculate the reaction enthalpy. You're given in the question the formation enthalpy of stearic acid. You have to use that to figure out the combustion enthalpy or the reaction enthalpy. So you cannot use the formation enthalpy in your actual calculation. If you do products minus reactants, so the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants, you're going to end up with a reaction enthalpy of negative 135.4 kilojoules. Okay? That's your reaction enthalpy. If we put that back into the reaction, we'll put it as a product because it's an exothermic reaction. Then we can take it out and use it as our molar enthalpy or an, our HM for our actual input. So 135, and we're talking about the combustion of stearic acid. So because I balance this with the one in front of the stearic acid, the molar enthalpy just becomes 135.4 kilojoules per one mole of stearic acid. Had I balanced that with a two, you would have to divide it by two in order to get the molar enthalpy, which is your HM. From there, we'll use our HM to determine the enthalpy of the input using delta H equals NHM. So we're going to use that 50 grams to determine the enthalpy of the input. So 50 grams of stearic acid, and we'll turn that into moles using the molar mass of stearic acid, which is 284.54. And we'll multiply that by the molar enthalpy, which was our reaction enthalpy, which is 135.4. And that's negative. So looking at our units, our grams cancel out, our moles cancel out, and we're left with input kilojoules. Okay, so kilojoules is what we're going to be looking for on the top as well. And you're going to end up with a negative 23.79 kilojoules as our input because it's, that's the chemical reaction. That's all the energy coming out of the chemical reaction if it was a perfectly ideal system. Now I have to make note that I did use the molar enthalpy of gaseous water because it's not in a perfect calorimeter. We have to use it as an open system. And in a combustion reaction, an open system provides a gas water. 
So our input is going to be negative 23.79 kilojoules. What you have to do now is you have to cal calculate the output. And what we had here was we had the aluminum pot and the water both being heated up by the stearic acid candle. So you have to use Q equals MC delta T multiplied by Q equals MC delta T. Now I've noted that the aluminum is 300, my heat capacity of aluminum is 0 0.897, and my temperature change is 25. So I can simply do the calculation for Q equals MC delta T right here. So Q equals MC delta T of the aluminum pot plus MC delta T of the water. And we just plug those numbers in. And we end up finding out that our Q is actually going to be equal to 22.44 kilojoules. Now I did skip a step on this part. If you notice your grams cancel out and your degrees Celsius cancel out. But you're left with joules on this guy. So I automatically converted it into kilojoules by dividing by 1000 after I got that number. You have to make sure that you're using kilojoules here and kilojoules here and make sure that your units are effectively the same. From there, we just calculate the efficiency, which is output over input. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our efficiency, and we're going to say 22.44 kilojoules came out, and we put in 23.79 kilojoules. We multiply that by 100%. And you are going to get an efficiency of 94%. Now that is extremely unlikely to happen in everyday life. 94% efficiency is basically all our heat is going directly into the pot and the water. In real life, it's going to be like 1% or 2% and that's an acceptable standard. So make sure that you're actually thinking about your real, realisticness of the chemical reaction. So that's all I have for you today. We talked about simple calorimeter being everyday calorimeter and being an open system, so having to take into account the heat capacity of the different things, changing at different temperatures, um, and you calculated the enthalpy of the reaction using an open system calorimeter or a simple calorimeter that's not closed. And then we figured out the efficiency of our chemical reaction.